Hey, I'm here doing some remodeling in this room, and I need to check if this corner is an exact right angle. Now, the way I'm going to do that is, I happen to know that a triangle that has sides that are 4 by 3 by 5 is an exact right triangle. Not the way I've drawn it here, but if I drew it exactly, it is a right triangle. So, what I'm going to do is, on this wall here, I'm going to measure three feet out this way. And put a little mark on the wall. And then I'm going to measure four feet out this way. Put another little mark on the wall. Right, right there, and then I'm going to measure this distance here between the two marks. Check if it's a check if it's exactly that five feet that I'm looking for. Now this is a little floppy, so I'm not going to use a tape measure there. What I'm going to use is this stick that I have already cut to exactly five feet in length to check if the distance between those two marks. Is exactly five feet because if it is then I know that this is an exact right angle so I'll line this mark this part into the stick over here and I'll slide that one in and see that see whether it's lines right up with that mark and it does so that means that this is an exact right angle because we have a four three five triangle three four five triangle now how do I know that that is an exact right angle triangle how do I know that that triangle has a right angle in it it's because I know a uh, very well-known mathematical idea called the Pythagorean relation and we're gonna look at that right now now the Pythagorean relation is something that's true of any right triangle so I'm gonna draw one like what I had up in the room there, except to make it four inches by three inches by five inches instead of feet, just so I can fit it on my paper here. So we're gonna start with a little dot down here, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna draw one line that's four inches long here, right up to there. And then I'm gonna use this piece of cardstock to create a right angle here. To use as my right angle, I'll draw three the other way here. I need a ruler too. We're going to measure exactly three there. Put a dot there. And then connect this. Now when I draw this third line, if I've got an exact right angle there and four and three, this should be exactly five. And more or less, it is exactly five there. Right, right on the five inch mark there, right at that corner. Now, the Pythagorean relation doesn't have to do with the lengths of the sides. It has to do with creating a square on each side. Now, just so you can visualize this, I'm going to use some tiles for this. So, if we made a square on this side that's 3 here, this side is 3, we can make a square, perfect square on there. We need 9 tiles because the square of 3 is 9. And... And on this side that's 4, we need 16, because the square of 4 is 16. There. So we've got two squares, one on each side there. We've got a square on the, the two shorter sides. The two shorter sides of a right triangle are called the legs of the right triangle. Two shorter sides, called the legs, the ones that make up the right angle. And I'm not sure why I didn't mention this, but the longest side is called the hypotenuse. It's the side across from the right angle, the longest side, hypotenuse. Now what the Pythagorean, Pythagorean relationship says is that if you make a square on the two shorter sides, on the two legs, and you add that area together, it should be equal to the square on the longer side. So if I make a square on the longer side, it should be equal to the sum of these two. Or 
Another way of thinking about it is that if I took all of these things, I could use them to make an exact square on here. I've got nine here and I've got 16 here. Together, that makes 25, which is the square of, of this side. So if I take these two and build it on the other side, I can uh, have an exact, it makes that exact square, right? If this was not a right triangle, that wouldn't work. You wouldn't be able to take the two squares here and combine them together to make that, all right? Now I'm just gonna re take a second here really quickly to recreate these two squares so we can see it all together. lined up perfectly but you get the idea here. Close enough. Alright so again if this is a right triangle, this is an exact right angle, then this square plus this square, the two smaller squares added together will have the same area as this. I've done it with perfect squares with four and four squared, 16, three, three squared is nine, but it would work with any, any length here. If you made any kind of right triangle of any lengths, if it's a right triangle, these two areas, even if they're not nice perfect squares like this, will add up to this area. That's the Pythagorean relation. All right, we're gonna look at this a little bit more dynamically here where we can change lengths and things like that. This is the same right angle triangle I had before three, four, and five on that longest side. Now, the, again, the Pythagorean relationship has to do with the area of the squares on those sides. So I'm going to uh, make this smaller so we can make some squares and see them. The square on that, one of those short sides there is has an area of nine. This next one has an area of 16. And then the square on that biggest side has an area of 25. Now, this right down here is a right angle which we'll just confirm by turning on the angles. And you see this little square that's usually used to indicate a right angle. And since it's a right triangle, with a right angle there, uh, the Pythagorean relationship says that the area of the two smaller squares is gonna add up exactly to that area, that bigger square. Now, if we take this and uh, make this so that this angle is bigger than 90, so if I drag this over here somewhere, uh, that's bigger than 90. Now, now the area of this big square is bigger than the sum of these other two, right? These two add up to not enough for that. This is bigger. If I make this smaller than a right angle, so I pass right by that right angle and make it smaller, now this square is too small for the other two. These two here add up to 24.02. That's smaller than that, right? So if you have this angle bigger than 90 here, this area of the big square is bigger than the other two, the sum of the other two. If you have this angle smaller than 90, this area is smaller than the sum of the other two. If you have it exactly equal to 90, it's exactly equal to the sum of the other two. Now that's that triangle I started with. I can make other right triangles and you'll see that it still works, that Pythagorean relationship. If I can make one where both of these are three, then they each have an area of nine. Well then that square on the big side is 18. I could uh, make this even smaller here. You got two, so the area is four. You have three, so the area is nine. You got 13 up there. Uh, make a tall skinny one here, 40 is equal to 36 plus four. Now I've got it so that the right angle's on this grid line here, but you can make it so that it's not. Say if I put that there, and then I put this right there, and let's put this other one uh, right over here somewhere. How about that? So there's a right angle there. Now we've got it that these are the two small ones, 18 and uh, eight, and then the, the longest one's down at the bottom here. 18 and eight does add up to exactly 26, because that's a right angle. Now, some terms I mentioned before, uh, but never wrote down, the two shorter sides of a right triangle are referred to as the legs, and the longest side, the one that is across from the right angle, is referred to as the hypotenuse. All right, the legs are the ones that make up the right angle 
And the hypotenuse is this one that doesn't touch the right angle, it's a cross. Now the Pythagorean relationship can be expressed in a variety of ways. One is with words as follows. The sum of the areas of the squares on the legs of a right triangle, that sum is equal to the area of the square on the hypotenuse, right? Sum of those two squares equal to that one. You can also express it algebraically using symbols. So let's get these words uh, out of the way first. If we give some names to these sides, so if we call the two shorter sides A and B, and we call the hypotenuse the long side C, then we can write some expressions for the areas of the squares. This square down here has an area of a times a, or in other words, a squared. And this one has an area of b squared, b times b. And then that big one is an area of c squared. So if we write an addition statement for those three areas, these two, a squared plus b squared, has to be equal to c squared if this is a right angle, all right? That's how it works. If this is a right angle, then these two areas add up to this area. Or if you know that these two areas add up to this area, then you know that this is a right angle. Now we're gonna use that Pythagorean relationship right now as one last final thing we do here to do exactly that, to check whether something is a right angle like I was doing right at the start of the video. Let's say you were going to make a triangle that had lengths of 5 centimeters, 6 centimeters, and 8 centimeters. How can we use this Pythagorean relationship to check whether it would be a right triangle or not before we even construct the thing? Well, if we make a really rough sketch of it here, we can check the areas of the squares and see if the Pythagorean relationship holds or not. We can draw a small triangle to start with here. Now, I'm not drawing it to scale or anything, and I'm just going to label the sides here as 5, 6, and 8. Now, if this were a right triangle, the 5 and the 6 would be the legs, and the 8 would be the hypotenuse, because it's the longest side, and the right angle would be right across from that uh, 8, so this one, and that's the one we don't know whether it's a right angle, and we'll check right now. If you have the three squares on each side, you can easily figure out what the areas would be, This area down here would be 5 squared, or 25. This area up here would be 6 squared, or 36. And this big area would be 8 squared, or 64. And we want to know if it's a right triangle, then 5 squared plus 6 squared would be equal to 8 squared. Now, let's see, are those things equal? 25 and 36, and this is going to be 64. This is 61. 61 is definitely not equal to 64. They're close, so it might be pretty close to a right angle, but it's not going to be exactly a right angle, not going to be a right triangle because those are not equal. So you can say that, uh, therefore, this won't be a right triangle. And maybe before we wrap things up here, we should talk a little bit about where the name of this concept comes from. The Pythagorean relation is named after a guy named Pythagoras, who was a Greek mathematician and philosopher from uh, the Greek island of Samos in the Aegean Sea. He lived about 2,600 years ago. And uh, one of the interesting things is the Pythagorean relation is named after him, even though there's evidence that lots of other cultures uh, the Egyptians uh, in India, in China, and elsewhere knew about this concept uh, long before he lived. So, there you have just a little bit of an introduction to one of the most well-known ideas in mathematics, the Pythagorean relation.